Hello and welcome to Banking Frontiers Live. As usual, we are here to have one more luminary, interesting luminary from the world of payments today to speak to us about some of the interesting insights that are happening in the world of transaction banking and trade financing and trade payments. With me today, uh, his name is Narayan Ram Murthy, uh, and he is going to share with us some fantastic insights on what kind of revolution and digital transformation has been happening in the transaction banking and trade finance space, and where is this industry going towards? Naru, welcome to Banking Frontiers Live. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great to be here. Great. So, Naru, we have been talking a lot about, uh, you know, digitization of transaction banking, digital transformation of transaction banking, integrating the receivables and payables. This has been for long uh, the story of any of the corporates which are working in trade finance. What has been some of the recent trends with the kind of uh, uh, digital transformation happening? How has this uh, facilitated the world of trade finance and transaction banking? Sure. So, see, the first thing is what's the perspective of the customer, right? Whether it's the corporate or whether it is the, uh, the customer of the corporate, like a dealer distributor or the vendor of the corporate on the accounts payable side, right? right? Now, the expectation is starting to really increase thanks to what's happened in the consumer payment space, right? Consumer experience in India has exploded or worldwide, right? In terms of if I'm making a payment to you, it is just putting your name, a mobile number, click, you know, putting the value and clicking a button and lo and behold, it kind of happens, right? Similarly, let's say C2B, like utility payments and stuff like that, has become, you know, par for the course. Everybody's kind of used to it any part of the world, any part of the world. But B2B has been extreme frictions, right? But the expectation is what can we do to kind of make it smoother? That's where somebody like us, you know, we have spent the last five years, you know, researching, building tech, building, uh, you know, a lot of automation capabilities with over 50 large, you know, many of them being Fortune 500 companies being on our platform and several banks like JP Morgan, Standard Chartered, Deutsche, HDFC, Axis being like partners to us. Now, what's happening is the Banks have a phenomenal, you know, relationship with corporates, right? And this, this trust-based relationship over the years. Corporates are looking for, you know, solutions to say, hey, I don't only want the collections account and you telling me how much money have I received in my account, okay? That's, that's a given. Corporates are now telling banks or asking banks saying, what more can you do, right? Can you actually help me saying who has paid? Right. Can you actually help me enable the payment from my customers? Can you actually help me reducing the cost of my payments? Can you actually help me optimizing working gap? Right, et cetera, et cetera. Right? That's where we become relevant. And I think that movement is now uh, gaining significant traction. Okay, lot of companies are now emerged in the working capital uh, uh, AR, AP automation kind of space. And we think in the next three to five years, there is a tremendous amount of action going to happen in the space. And banks have a great opportunity to build further sticky relationships to, you know, really add value to their corporates in the space. Fantastic. So essentially, uh, from whatever little bit I understand, the banks can actually make uh, global payx as their partners and try to embed your services into their entire portfolio and sell it to their customers. Absolutely. Fantastic. So, see, one of the major pain points for many of the organizations today has been supply chain financing. And this has also been viewed by the banks as a possible uh, area or a sweet spot to target the SME financing and the MSMEs, which are a part of the entire uh, supply chain of most of these large corporates. What are the kind of uh, solutions that you have developed which will empower A, the banker and B, the uh, entire channel also? Sure. So uh, there are three parties right, involved in any financing deal, uh, whether on the receivable side or the payable side, depending on you know, whether you're a customer or whether you're a vendor, right, uh, kind of stuff. The parties are obviously the anchor corporate. The, the customer of the anchor corporate and the lending institution or institutions. Okay? 
So the first point is, you know, let's take the example of a mid to large corporate in India or any part of the world. There is no, uh, let's assume they have a thousand customers. Think about them as dealer distributors or agents or franchisees or whatnot. No one financial institution will be willing to kind of pick up the entire lending book for the, all the thousand guys. So that's point number one, principle number one. Two is each of them have their own needs in terms of automation. For example, the anchor corporate will have an ERP. Banks have a loan origination system. And the, the end payer or the, the customer of the customer, they you know, need an interface by which to consume the lending right, and also pay back you know, the loan that they're kind of uh, extended. That's the challenge, for example, you know, on the AR side that we try and solve for. So today what we have done is, in, let's take one market as an example. So in India, we have about 16,000 dealers for companies like 3M, Bridgestone, Stanley Black & Decker, etc. on our platform. We, these dealers are digitally on our platform on either a mobile app or a web app. Okay, so we, they, they, there is a regular interaction between for invoice presentment, for payments, for deductions, so on and so forth. What we have enabled now is banks and non-banks, right? So we have about eight banks and non-banks on our platform to lend to this ecosystem through us. And we see that as great value to all the parties because we automate stuff for all the three parties involved. It becomes true digital lending using us. Excellent. So uh, then the uh, with all these developments that has been happening throughout the world in the world of payments and settlements and things like that, uh, how does one get this overall clarity through this kind of solution about his position with the funds? This is one part of the question. And the other thing that I would also probably like to know, since there are a lot of these fintechs which are coming now into the picture for SME financing and for uh, financing the channel, how can they also work with such a solution? Sure. So let me answer the first uh, point for, uh, you know, on reconciliation. So reconciliation is very much the heart of our platform, right? You, you know, whether it is the, our AR automation platforms or AP automation platforms, we strive to achieve what we call str straight through reconciliation or straight through processing and customers who have used us you know depending on the products we use the reconciliation the straight through is could be upwards of 98 percent which means not only figuring out what money has come to the bank also figuring out who has paid also figuring out for which invoice with deduction you know etc cetera, etc cetera to at the end also going to the ERP. So we also kind of go to SAP, Oracle, Microsoft Dynamics, whatnot, any ERP of choice, and actually go and knock off automatically the ledger, sub-ledgers, and automate those postings. So that end-to-end -end automation, we can achieve 98% plus through our platforms. Okay, so that's in, you know, in terms of reconciliation, very much the core or heart of our solution. Secondly, answering the other point which you raised, like some of the new fintechs, right? Uh, well, for them, it is even better, right? Because they need access. Fintechs have a, hopefully have a terrific platform, have a digital, you know, onboarding capability, etc. But what they need is access to the end distributor, access to data on payments to be able to make a credit decision. That's what they need. That's what we have, right? So we are an API first company. If they have their APIs, we are talking of a few days or, you know, weeks to kind of integrate and get moving. So the fintechs can use us to lend if they, if they are like a lending or they have capital to kind of lend. But is it permitted as per the regulations of compliance and things like that to have such kind of partnerships to use the data? Oh, so for the way we enable data use is, for example, let's say the anchor corporate is ABC. Imagine it's a top you know, 500 kind of companies in India. We take the permission, right? of the corporate before we share data on behalf of the corporate with any you know nbfc That's fintech cool. bank who wants to kind of lend and initially we abstract the data we don't even put the distributor name and all that. we just give macro trends so that they can make a decision of who they want to lend to how much they want to lend to etc once a contract is signed it's only then that we start disclosing uh, you know names of the dealers and stuff like that makes sense because ultimately it is a heavily compliance driven industry Absolutely. So ultimately, everyone has to be taking care in an era when the uh, number of uh, fines are multiplied in leaps and bounds by all the top regulators in the world. 
uh, on the last side of it, uh, towards my last question, I just wanted to check with you. How do you see the future of transaction banking? Where are we moving towards? Well, at least to the areas. So the, so the one thing, one writing is on the wall is payment costs are going to keep coming down. Okay. So with open banking, firstly, you know, we have seen over the last, you know, uh, 18 months, thanks to COVID in some ways, is people have moved away from checks to other payment mechanisms like ACH, NACH, and NEFT, and, you know, wire transfers, right? So that's already started. Second is open banking, right? Now, open banking means I can enable a real-time bank-to-bank payment instantaneously, right? And India, already three, four banks have enabled open banking. We are already integrated with that. SEPA Direct in, the, in Europe is another excellent example where we are integrated with that. Okay. Again, that trend is going to continue. Okay. So that payment costs are going to keep coming down. So transaction banking teams have to really figure out other mechanisms to kind of increase revenues. Today, transaction banking is roughly a trillion dollar kind of a market. Okay. We is under pressure. Okay. So how can banks, you know, keep at least consistent or keep improving? The only way, in my view, is to go into integrated receivables and payables by putting a a lot of tech, putting a lot of value add, really, you know, helping companies, CFOs, treasurers in working capital optimization and charging value, charging a fee, right, to doing that. That's where I think the future of transaction banking is not the core, you know, float or uh, payment revenue. I think that's under challenge. A lot of uh, value that is going to be created out of it, a lot of availability of funds that can be created by it, probably a lot of Visibility of the end-to-end -end of the funds that are available is also probably a... Yeah, which is definitely one of the aspects, cash flow forecasting, right? Which is one of the key aspects of working capital optimization. Absolutely. Interesting. Thank you so much, Naru, for this short conversation. While the topic is big and there is a lot more to talk about and have conversation on, uh, we will end this conversation here and leave the rest of the interesting parts of the discussion to future conversation that we can have with each other. Thank Thoroughly you. Thoroughly so enjoyed. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much.